Well, um, pronoun da bao ba Good, good afternoon, all. And thank you, David, for those kind words. And thank you all very much for the invitation to address the conference today and to the learning and work establishment for organizing this very important conference. And I'm very glad the conference is concentrating on building a second chance nation where it's never too late to learn. And I hope you, like me, are always excited to be able to meet to discuss the work that we can do together to support adults on the journey, lifelong journey. It's something that I feel personally very strongly about, and it's every time inspirational to be part of this type of discussion and to be able to learn from your experience that makes this difference in the lives of so many people. Before I start on what I want to say, I just want to say, if I may, Scott, it's just incredibly inspiring listening, uh, listening to your story. Dave told us it would be, but I mean, it genuinely is. Uh, very moving actually to hear how education has transformed your life uh, and uh, potentially the lives of many many others as well um, and i hope that you do achieve your ambition uh, of a shed in every town obviously you're proud of what you've achieved as you should be and we we celebrate with that with you and congratulate you for uh, for that diane diane scott and well done scott for everything you succeeded in your way bit of a debate uh, around the term um, and what it might mean. Um, that's not uh, a new phenomenon. Uh, we started by hearing uh, from Scott, but there's another Scott uh, that I just want to refer to, uh, maybe a little improbably uh, in the context uh, of uh, an adult lifelong learning conference, and that is, of course, um, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Um, critics uh, and commentators alike uh, often quote his maxim that there are uh, no second acts in American lives. Um, and it's meant to sum up uh, that idea of uh, your one shot, one chance uh, rule of public life or of careers or of, of politics. Well, I fundamentally disagree with that worldview. And when it comes to education, our lives should not and must not uh, depend on one shot, one chance, one pathway, one decision it must never be too late to learn or to become more democratically and critically engaged through education or to learn that new skill, to acquire that new qualification, to become more personally, more culturally and more academically fulfilled. I want Wales to be that nation of second chances uh, in education. Um, and uh, Scott Fitzgerald was actually on to something, the full quote, uh, which people people often overlook uh, says i once thought there were no acts no second acts uh, in american lives but there was certainly to be a second act to new york's boom days that's the full quote uh, colleagues out of necessity really um much of my first year the first act you might say uh, as education uh, and welsh language minister has focused on uh, working with you to keep uh, the nation learning through the pandemic and I want to thank you for everything that you've done over the last two years in incredibly uh, challenging times but for our second act I we uh, really we must focus relentlessly uh, on the central role that education will have uh, in creating those boom days if you like that I'm confident uh, lie ahead for Wales again and the role it will play in breaking that link between deprivation and destiny in cr creating and nurturing uh, employable engaged ethical citizens of all ages uh, and in raising standards uh, and widening access through digital uh, and through technology and these aspirations are no less relevant in tertiary education including uh, adult and community learning than they are to our schools. So I want to spend some time today exploring how we can move forward together uh, in this endeavor. And even if there are no second acts in American lives, I'm determined that Wales should be a nation of second chances 
uh, and that we can realize that ambition together. And as Scott was saying, uh, there are many opportunities at second chances throughout any individual life. Uh, but firstly, I want to thank you for uh, all you've done as a sector taking on the challenge of working with us to uh, implement a new funding and planning model with parity and with equity at its heart. Um, there is, of course, further to go, but we now have a sound platform, I think, to build on. And I want to discuss how we do that in the context of four uh, approaches. The first is the importance of strategy and uh, strategic duty. The second is the shared responsibility that we all have for this. The third is the need for sustainability. Um, and finally, that idea of second chances. So turning to the first of these, uh, the strategy uh, and the strategic duties. Uh, there is something exciting, I think, happening uh, in Welsh law and lifelong learning at the moment. And I recognize as a lawyer that the bar for what counts uh, as exciting in the world of law is probably a little bit uh, lower for me than perhaps for others. But let me remind you, in the uh, tertiary education uh, and research bill, we recently passed the general principle stage in the Senate, which I'm very pleased about. Um, and for the first time ever, uh, we are legislating to promote uh, lifelong learning. We are putting it uh, into law, making it a duty uh, on the new tertiary uh, commission and making it the first uh, such strategic duty uh, in the bill. Uh, you may not have spotted it in the bill when it was uh, published uh, last year, uh, and there's a good reason for that. It wasn't, it wasn't in there. But on becoming minister, uh, I took the view that we needed to put more of our um, vision, our values, and our ambitions on the face of the bill itself. And for me, that starts with uh, lifelong learning and with adult community learning at the heart of that. And it sits alongside those other important duties uh, which enshrine those uh, shared principles and shared values that I just mentioned. Uh, equality of opportunity, uh, of collaboration, uh, of tertiary education through the medium of Welsh, uh, of civic mission, um, and of a global outlook. Um, and the new commission, which will be a, a new steward, really, for all tertiary education and research, will operate under those uh, principles and will implement those duties. And it links very clearly uh, to the purposes and principles of our new national school curriculum, empowering our young people to learn throughout their lives. Uh, and the curriculum represents uh, what we want and expect from the citizens of the future, guaranteeing the core skills of literacy, numeracy, uh, and digital competence. Uh, it will empower uh, learners to grow as citizens through a broad and balanced set of experiences, uh, knowledge, and skills. And it shares, I think, a lot in common with uh, the Learning and Work Institute's innovative citizens curriculum uh, that looks to tackle uh, the barriers that prevent adult learner participation. So that learning those essential and life skills such as literacy and numeracy can become more relevant through uh, co-construction with learners and through using community delivery. Um, Although it's a new approach, it's rooted in that adult education tradition of community, culture and citizenship. And engaging with uh, and empowering adults to access public services, to be engaged citizens and to enjoy uh, improved health, improved employment outcomes. I think this is a, a, an idea with real potential for us in Wales. So uh, I want to tell you that I have asked our new external reference group for adult learning to study uh, this approach and to make some recommendations to me on how we can pilot uh, a citizen's curriculum for Wales in Wales. Our new school curriculum was co-constructed uh, with those who have the experience of teaching uh, our young people. So I want us to draw on that uh, way of working, that spirit of 
co-development and co-production and ally that to the expertise and experience at this conference so we can design uh, a national framework which is ready to be adapted, designed and delivered uh, locally. And that brings me to my next theme, which is uh, that idea of shared responsibility uh, for this endeavour. Blending the national and the local with learners uh, at the centre is fundamental to my idea of shared responsibility. And I mentioned the new reference uh, group for adult learning a couple of moments ago. Uh, it met, actually, uh, as some of you will know, for the first time uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, influenced by uh, Sue Pember's excellent report for the Wales Centre for Public Policy. And I know that Sue is speaking uh, a little later. Um, and the group will, uh, has come together uh, to look at those systemic barriers uh, that lie uh, in our path. And, you know, we all know that they are complex uh, and that they are long-standing. So we are going to need to be uh, imaginative uh, and cre creative in how we tackle them. And the next two years, I think, are going to be crucial uh, in building the capacity and the uh, capability that we need in order to deliver this commitment. Um, so in helping to co-design uh, a program of national coordination, uh, the group will provide advice and provide scrutiny um, and ensure that we reach um, as wide a constituency uh, as possible. And I'm pleased uh, also to say that I've provided funding of two million pounds over the next two years uh, to back up this work and to help contribute to getting uh, the sector ready for the future. We must have a programme of national coordination based on close collaboration between providers, just as uh, David was talking about at the start. So my ask of you all here today uh, is to engage with that uh, so that we can work with and across the whole uh, tertiary education system in that cooperative and collaborative way that we know will uh, be more effective uh, in the end. Our shared challenge uh, is to improve quality uh, and access to uh, skills-based, to formal and informal adult learning and to support progression for all our learners. And we have to get this right uh, as we move ahead with the creation of the Commission for Tertiary Education and Research. The Commission will be taking on responsibility, as many of you will know, for the funding and the overall strategic direction uh, of adult learning, in addition to further education, higher education, apprenticeships, uh, and school sixth forms. And it'll provide the funding to local authorities, to colleges, uh, to Adult Learning Wales, um, which is so, so crucial to realizing uh, the mission of adult education. But it will do it with, uh, I think, a renewed uh, strategic focus based in legislation, as I've said, uh, on enabling uh, and ensuring lifelong learning for people from all walks of life. Um, and the Commission will also be responsible for signing off outcome agreements with colleges uh, and with universities. Um, and I want us to be in a position where those institutions uh, reflecting that uh, lifelong learning duty are in the habit, if you like, of disseminating their work more widely, whether that's online, whether it's taster courses, uh, public lectures and seminars, uh, working with uh, local employers, with enterprises. We need to see wider uh, and deeper uh, engagement. Uh, and though we talk of uh, civic mission, uh, this isn't uh, missionary work, uh, as uh, my late friend Howell Francis described it. Rather, it's genuine empowerment uh, and democratic engagement. And so I expect to see this as a key priority within those outcome agreements in the future. And alongside that, uh, I'm also keen to explore the idea of a national charter for lifelong learning. Uh, the role uh, of supporting people on their learning journey to help them to flourish 
um, and help strengthen our communities in doing so extends actually beyond uh, education institutions to partners such as uh, libraries, uh, museums, but can also reach uh, beyond that again to other public bodies and indeed further perhaps to, uh, to technology, to media and indeed other companies. How can we uh, develop an approach where these can all sign up to agreed principles uh, and actions, importantly, uh, that support community and lifelong learning. I want us to do more to encourage this work, particularly as it relates to uh, citizenship education, tackling misinformation um, and questions of digital competence. I know the uh, director of the National Museum, for example, describes that institution um, as a central service for learning. Uh, and I want to embed uh, that spirit and that sense of shared endeavor and shared responsibility. Uh, next, uh, I spoke about sustainability. Um, and I think we're at a critical juncture in co-creating a sustainable and strong system. How we harness uh, digital learning and technology is essential to that sustainability. The idea of coming together to learn to break down barriers, to engage uh, and explore. That's all essential to education uh, as a public and common good. Um, and this must be true whether it's in the classroom, in the community or uh, online. I've already provided um, almost uh, six million pounds to improve uh, the digital capacity um, and to address the challenges of net zero in the adult learning and college sectors um, and a further two million pounds allocated to the network of local authority adult learning to re-engage um, some of those perhaps hardest to reach learners uh, in our society and to support uh, the promotion and delivery of engagement uh, and provision and building on uh, the experience over the last two years i'm keen to do more to support the adult learning sector to broaden its reach uh, through digital and blended learning as part of the offer. We've made tailored support available to the sector through JISC uh, to help each provider uh, build its digital capabilities. Um, and through the reference group um, and the programme of national coordination, it's really imperative that we look at how we can take this forward and find further opportunities in this area, including uh, more shared resources for adult learning. So in schools and colleges, we have the incredible asset actually uh, of what is a globally recognized um, hub learning platform. Um, what could be an equivalent platform? What could that look like for adult learners? A destination which is trusted, which is well known uh, with a wide offer of content, resources, training, guidance, and where the content is straightforward to access, easily navigable um, and convenient. And I'm keen to hear from learners and from the sector what potential this could have to support adult learning. I know that uh, adult learning is a lifeline uh, for so many people and staying connected was hugely important during lockdown. One local authority said to us that one vulnerable isolated learner living alone cried when the equipment was delivered to her and said she felt part of the world again now that she can see people. And I think through the last two years, many learners have found their way online and become familiar with remote learning. But we also have to recognize that the social, personal and the well-being impact of this period means that many are even further away from learning. We already know that 24% of adults are without a level two qualification, 14% without a level one. And almost half of adults from the lower socioeconomic groups have not received any training since they left full-time education. Now we have to tackle that and to tackle that together. 
we've got ambitious targets to reduce the numbers of working age adults with no qualifications to 5% or below, and to ensure that 75% of working age adults in Wales are qualified to at least level three by 2050. But it's been over a decade since the last national audit of adult literacy skills in Wales. And it's about time that we corrected that and to get an up-to-date view of the situation alongside data about qualifications and the targets. So I've asked my officials to commission a new State of the Nation audit of adult literacy and numeracy to address this. In creating that nation of second chances where it's never too late to learn, we first need to be honest and understand the scale of the challenge. And so I'll have more to say about uh, this audit uh, in the coming weeks. The sustainability of the workforce is integral in how we move forward successfully as well. And over the last two years, we've been able to allocate 175,000 pounds to the adult learning sector to support uh, mental health and professional development. And much of that has been focused on well-being support, helping to build res resilience uh, for both staff um, and for learners. And we'll continue to work closely with you to make sure that the support is there, the right support is there and in place. The post-16 uh, workforce development project is currently underway to develop a professional learning framework for staff across all parts of the post-16 uh, sector. And adult learning plays an important part uh, in this work. Um, and I'm pleased that representatives from the sector are engaged through the steering group and through the task and finish groups. The three themes that I've discussed so far, strategy, shared responsibility and sustainability, uh, all lead into my overarching fourth theme, that idea of a nation of second chances where it's never too late to learn. And I mentioned the misinterpretation uh, of one of F. Scott Fitzgerald's famous lines at the start. Well, he also said, no grand idea was ever born in a conference. But colleagues, I can assure you the idea of a second chance nation was not born in a conference, but I know that it will develop um, and evolve and become tangible through the contributions and the ideas and deliber deliberations uh, of people in this conference and uh, beyond. And we've already started to build that uh, new approach, that new future. The new bill will place a duty on the Commission to secure proper facilities for relevant further education and training for eligible adults. Now that's a big step forward uh, in adult provision and it will be backed up by funding and we will work with you to define the scope of that uh, in regulations over the coming two years. My long-term vision is of that universal right to lifelong learning to give every citizen that opportunity. And we need to work together collaboratively to increase the numbers of adults learning in Wales. I don't want us to narrow our sights. I was struck by uh, Sir Alan Tuckett's recent words and analysis that we must move away from the binary consideration of the purpose of adult and lifelong learning. He said there'd been too narrow a focus on investment as a choice between vocational education and neglected education for citizenship and cultural fulfillment. Economic prosperity and social cohesion, he said, both benefit from sustained commitments to lifelong learning. And I couldn't agree more. And I'm determined that that is the spirit that we move forward. Initiatives like TITE that we've heard a bit about and we'll hear more about our new global uh, education exchange program show the importance that we attach to creating those new opportunities. I know Susanna, who is the director of TITE, is going to be talking to you about the program, but I just wanted to say it's the best funded uh, international mobility program in Wales ever. Um, with significant funding available for applications specifically uh, from the adult learning sector this year. So let's make the most of this uh, exciting opportunity um, and specifically the exciting opportunities that Tithe provides for adult learners and staff across the nation. 
So I just want to conclude, uh, colleagues, um, by saying I'm confident that we do have those boom days that we talked about earlier uh, for adult learning ahead of us. It'll require us to keep the faith, uh, to share responsibility, uh, to create those oppor opportunities that are truly sustainable. There's an old Welsh uh, proverb that many of you will know that says, three times lucky for a Welshman, but uh, education chances and true lifelong learning shouldn't and must not be a matter of luck. Uh, a true nation of second chances is one where we work together, build that shared uh, citizenship, tackle the impact of poverty on aspiration, on opportunity, and on education itself. And nothing uh, is more important uh, for a modern and successful economy, for empowered communities, for a fair uh, and inclusive society, uh, than that idea of a nation where it's never too late to learn. Thank you.